Welcome to the Kiefer's Hot Rod Shop YouTube channel. I'm Nick Kiefer. Before we get those shock and suspension brackets in, I wanted to go ahead and show you all the process of uh, getting these uh, down bars in. So we'll go over this pair of main down bars, which run between the rear upper frame rails and where the uh, roof bars are going to join into the main hoop there on either side. And I'll also show you all how I set up this X to uh, keep everything nice and stiff. I'm going to have these run from in line with this rear upper frame rail here on both sides up to where I plan to attach the roof and A-pillar bar. Those join the main hoop right at where the tube gets to 45 degrees from horizontal, like the across the top on both sides and it just happens to be 40 inches um, from the bottom of the rocker. So it's a nice even number and a nice easy to work with angle. So I'm actually going to um, measure the distance between <clears throat> these two bars. So I'll also calculate um, this angle based on the distance between these bars and the distance and width um, from this plane of the car out to that. And so I'll make a piece and um, see if it fits. Uh, if it doesn't, then I'll just I'll use that piece to uh, kind of measure off of and, and make final pieces for both sides. One additional thing uh, to kind of consider in making a tube like this, um, I've got this just uh, carpentry square uh, speed angle, um, which, you know, is, is a 45 degree angle. So if you can see that mark there, that's where the tube is at 45 degrees from, from horizontal or vertical, but just mainly the thing, main thing I'm considering is horizontal, um, like the top of the hoop here. But um, my point being is you travel over to where the bottom of the down bar will land. That 45 degree angle um, does not remain uh, true, basically. So um, it goes from 45 just kind of to a little bit more um, just because you're you're going out of plane with that main hoop and that curve um, if you can imagine if you continue around the car eventually that same point will basically be straight up and down although this this main hoop leans back at a nine and a quarter degree angle um, so that that angle increases as you as you go off a plane and that's just another thing that um, you have to consider and, and kind of calculate for when making a tube like this and one easy way to do it is just to use like a, a dial level like a magnetic base style one and just hold it up there and, and eyeball it and see what kind of angle that gives you when you hold it level and I'm getting like um, 47, 48 degrees, so it's not very far off, but that'll give me a good starting point to make my uh, first tube. All right, I'm set up to notch this down bar. It goes from the main hoop to the rear hoop. Um, I've already notched this end at um, about five degrees taper, um, and then I've twisted it 50 degrees from this notch. Um, I'm setting this notch up at 23 degrees. All right. Well, not only is this a $20 length of chromoly tubing, but it's also a very useful tool. So when you cut something short, you should study it and measure the difference and use that to make a replacement. What I need to do is kind of look at this angle, make sure the angle's right, all these angles, and increase the length of the replacement, and um, 
then I'll just be able to use this piece of tubing to make something else that's shorter. Um, that's why a lot of times it's a great idea to start with some of your longer pieces. Another thing that I can do at this point is cut this in the middle, get these angles just right, and um, make maybe even put a piece in the middle that it can slide on, measure all the angles, the notch angles, the twist angle, all that, and then the length, um, and use that to make a, uh, a pair of perfectly fit tubes. All right, I'm starting to notch the down bar here. Um, I've already got this side notched. Um, the notch is about 22, 23 degrees. Um, I think it ended up about 22 and a half. And then um, it's twisted about 47 and a half degrees from this notch, which is at five and a half degrees. Um, kind of hard to tell on that thing, but hopefully it's going to fit in there. I will have to make the additional notch here for that upright. But um, I'll, uh, I'll start that and, and fit it in and, and look for other gaps and just see how that fits. So I'm going to make this notch, clean the tube up, and we'll uh, check out how it fits. All right. I've got this down bar uh, jammed in here. Um, I've got it up close to the mark on top. And uh, it's pretty much where it needs to sit on the bottom. But... Um, I, uh, I had to really jam it in here, so it's uh, it's a little long. It's just kind of deflecting the main hoop right now. But um, what I'm doing is sneaking up on this notch, so it looks pretty good. At this point, I can I can kind of move it to one side or the other um, if I if I don't like how these tubes line up, and I might move it. Um, a little move the notch a little this way so that the tube moves that way but um, the other thing is I can tell by this gap that that notch needs to be a little deeper um, obviously if this fit loosely and there's a gap there and no gap here then it just means that this gap is too deep or this notch is too deep but um, it is like jammed in there so I'm gonna keep working on that notch um, and then, uh, then I'll show y'all kind of how it fits once I, uh, cope that in a little bit. All right. So I worked on that notch a little bit, uh, die grinded it out and it's, um, it's sitting down pretty well. I think I'm going to want to work on it just a little bit more. Um, but also up at the, uh, top front, it's, um, it won't jam into place, um, and uh, it's so it seems like it's just a little long. I'm sliding it from the bottom up to the top. Just kind of the way the um, main hoop leans and with that, that curve and all that, it just kind of has more clearance at the bottom. And so um, sliding it in to fit that way just works best. So I can tell if it stops short, it's just kind of, it's just long, which is good because that, you know, gives me an opportunity to, to trim it. <clears throat> but um, I'm going to cope that out a bit and um, I might go ahead and just um, uh, notch like a, a little bit more into the, uh, into the notch of the tube just to shorten it a little bit and we'll, uh, we'll see how it fits after all that. I, uh, I trimmed that end a little bit. The uh, notcher is set up to that angle and um, I cope that a little bit and um, it's still a little long. It's it's tight in there. Um, and I also I want to move this out a little bit. So <clears throat> you can see that this notch is a little deep. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shorten the tube on this side in these notches. Um, this is a great opportunity also to um, fix any kind of um, angle issues with the notch, but the angle really looks pretty good. Um, this, this outside might be 
exactly touching while this one's got a little gap so I might grind a little more off of that um, especially considering that it's going to be tilting like that just a little bit more so I'm gonna get that outside some and then it looks like I've got plenty of plenty of room for this to kind of slide that way but um looking pretty good and it's uh it's nice to be able to uh, kind of mock it up in the car and, and visualize it. All right, I'm a little bit closer after grinding that. I think I want to grind this just a little more. You can see kind of at the top where that, that notch lifts off a little bit. Um, I think this, this side just kind of jammed in there and so it might be rotated a little bit, but I'm gonna mess with that with the die grinder a little more. Um, it's also kind of tight. I still want to push that that way a little bit. Um, I want it kind of more centered with this upright than um, um, that le that inside edge lining up. Um, I'd kind of rather that be just out just a tiny bit more. But um, it's looking good. It's fitting pretty well. Uh, the gap at the top looks pretty good, and um, just gonna mess with it a little more, and I'll uh, I'll show y'all how it fits. All right, ground that inside just a little bit, and um, I like how it's fitting now. Um, it, it still pushes in pretty tightly, but <clears throat> that's that's fine, and I might give it just a little bit more um, clearancing here and there. Um, I still need to complete this weld. Um, it looks like it's right there, but I just want to poke it out just to make sure it's complete under there. And so um, it looks like I might need a little more fillet for that, maybe. And so I might clean this up a little more, just kind of in that area. But otherwise, um, looks pretty good and uh, fits pretty well. And here it is uh, from the outside. Just leads right up to uh, where the cage is at 45 degrees. And possibly, maybe see my little mark there, but it's uh, it's looking good. Um, so now that I have this one fitting well, I can um, use the dimensions to uh, to make its mirror partner. All right. I've got the uh, other side uh, kind of jammed in here right now. Uh, went in tight and um, I can tell that um, I need to go at that notch there on the bottom just a little more. Otherwise, I think it looks like the angle's pretty much right and it um, looks like everything's going to fit pretty well. but. Before I went too far, uh, I just based this uh, notch off of the other one. Uh, you can kind of see a little bit of a Sharpie mark still there, but just didn't want to go too far. So now I kind of know where to go, and I'm going to um, go ahead and and uh, notch this up, and I'll show you all how it, how it fits. All right, got it stuck back in here, and I've uh, gone ahead and established a mark uh, for it for it to sit up at but um so now i'm seeing that there's a little gap out here um this is looking pretty good um i want to you know i'm going to be pulling this out a little bit <clears throat> but the inside is uh is tight so i know i just need to grind that down just a touch and um this thing should come over and, and fit up nicely all right so I went ahead and uh, ground this side, and I can see that um, this side still got a gap, which is uh, pretty much equal to that side. Um, but the uh, the bottom here is, is closed up, so that just tells me that that, that needs to be um, coped in just a little more, and then uh, it should it should slide in and fit pretty well. All right, so when I grind this with the uh, die grinder here, um, I like to kind of match the angle that the tube will be coming in at. And um, 
you know, just kind of keep keep moving. I also uh, made a uh, Sharpie mark here just so I can kind of see how far I've ground. Let's check out how that fits. All right, fits pretty well now. Um, it just seems to be sitting up on this one spot, so I'll hit that real quick and we'll check it out. All right, looking good. It's all uh, matched up and uh, it's a nice, uh, nice pair of uh, down bars. All right, I've got both rear down bars positioned in there. Um, Got them kind of put right where they need to go. Um, I made marks on either side. I'll, uh, I'm going to double check everything and, and measure angles and all that um, when it's closer to time to go ahead and tack them in. But they're, uh, they're looking good. Now that these down bars are in, I want to go ahead and uh, make an X that kind of goes inside of them here. And that X is going to land up on top um, of the, uh, at the flat part of the main hoop there. And so um, I've been able to figure out uh, that I can make all the angles 45 degrees. Obviously the intersect of the X in the middle will be 90 in that case, but it makes all the calculations really easy um, since all the uh, triangles... Uh, have two uh, congruent sides uh, in a 45 degree right triangle. Um, I've done the math here and um, using the distance uh, that I know between these two uh, tubes, uh, I've calculated this X. It will um, it'll start at the bottom um, with the center line of the tube aiming roughly at the center line of the up rear upper frame rail tubes. Um, it's within like an eighth of an inch of uh, the center of this fish mouth of the notch um, lining up with the inside of the tube. So I think that's, that's really how I'm gonna do it is kind of make the center line line up with the inside edge of this. So inside edge, inner center line of the X. And also um, the full width considering um, the, the amount that goes past the center line of the tube on top is uh, ending up right at 35 and a half inches. Um, and kind of the, the straight part of this main hoop is um, it's I think it's just about 36 so that's gonna make the notches and everything super simple um, you know obviously these were really tricky but I wanted to tie them into where those roof bars are going I could tie this X into those same nodes and that would be super strong but I do want something kind of supporting the very top of the the main hoop and also, they'll be right about where the gussets that go from the main hoop to the roof bars will be, too. So they'll kind of be coincident in line with those gussets as well. So it'll, it'll turn out nice and strong, and uh, everything will be well supported and tied together. So what I've done is calculated 
uh, the length of my main uh, one piece part of the cross as well as um, these two kind of legs and I've simplified that by calculating the distance uh, from the inside of either tube to this middle point and what I'm going to do is measure the outside of the tube when I go to notch it and that will give me the appropriate distance just this right triangle that I haven't really drawn here but it's it's 45 45 90 so this distance is the same as this distance so again the 45 degree angles really simplify everything um, these are the numbers I got the lengths I've uh, kind of added enough for the notches and rounded up gotten these rough lengths calculated out to build that and um, I've got them sitting right here uh, by the notcher about to uh, set it up and um, start uh, start notching these tubes all right so I'm starting to make the uh, center part of the X here and I've got one side notched at 45 degrees and now I need to mark it for the other side so what I like to do is um, my notcher uh, notches from the outside of an angle like this. I can do up to about a 20 degree angle, um, you know, kind of like from the uh, shorter side. But so, I know I'm going to be notching from the outside. And I've also calculated out that this piece from the inside of one to the outside of the opposite needs to be just over 38 and a quarter inches uh, long so um, uh, 22 thousandths is less than a 32nd of an inch which is 32 thousandths so what I'm gonna do is just barely try, try to cut it just a tiny bit longer than 38 and a quarter which is 25 hundredths and um, that should get me in the ballpark. Uh, there's always going to be a little bit of fine tuning with the uh, die grinder and stuff. So I want to get as close as I can, but I definitely don't want to cut it short. So I'll leave that extra little bit on there. How I do this is um, pull the measuring tape out and I'm going to hold it either at like one inch or two inches on that inside edge. And the inside edge of a notch is going to be the truest uh, part. Um, these um, kind of wings get ground down and deburred, and the same with the outside of the notch. So you always want to me measure based off of this, and also make sure that you've polished the notch, or at least maybe filed it, or make sure it's it's all the way notched because this is the other thing about the inside of the notch is for whatever reason it tip it, it typically tends to be the roughest part of the notch so just keep that in mind and then if you do deburred on the belt sander like I have just make sure you're measuring to the inside of the notch and not the inside of the polished area all right cool so I started the tape at one inch I'm going to a little over 38 and a quarter so I've marked just a little over 39 and a quarter, and I'll, I'll plan to just cut into that mark just a little bit. A Sharpie mark or anything similar to that, like chalk or uh, any kind of marker, has a certain width. So when you, when you make your mark, um, just plan <clears throat> to mark for either the outside, inside, or through the middle of the cut. It's just kind of helpful to have that plan established. All right, so I've lined the hole saw up with the mark, and I've used um, a straight edge. In this case, I'm just using an Allen key, just to give me an idea, make sure that the edge of the hole saw is lined up with the mark. And I'll give myself a little extra room because hole saws tend to cut just a little bigger um, than the outside of their teeth, just because they, they aren't perfectly round and they can move around just a little bit. An imperative part of making this notch is to um, measure the angle that the notch is going to be and go ahead and compare that 
um, to the uh, end of the tubing here. So I've got a little length of uh, 1 and 5 eighths tubing which matches the um, diameter of that notch that I made. And I like to insert that in the notch and then put a, um, a dial level in there um, to uh, compare the um, direction of that notch. So you can see I need to rotate this a couple degrees and what I'll do is I'll just rotate it and keep measuring back and forth to make sure until I know that these notches will be parallel in the tube. All right, cool. So you can see that's reading about a degree and a half to the right um, from, from zero there. And, and I've got this end reading the same. So at this point, what I'm going to do is uh, go ahead and before I tighten down the tube notcher, I'm going to use this uh, Allen key or any straight edge it'll fit in here just to verify that the mark is still at the uh, proper distance here. And then I'm, once I know it's right, I'll tighten it down and, and make the notch. All right, so I've made and cleaned up the notch in this piece here. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and mock it up. Now keep in mind that this piece will not ultimately be in this location. It's going to be um, slid over a little bit. But I just want to put it like this to check the notch. And uh, it looks like it turned out really nice. So the next step in this is going to be <clears throat> um, notching it in to fit around the uh, down bar here. And uh, I'll have to do the same thing for the other piece of the X that goes over there. And then the, uh, the upper piece will be pretty simple. I'll just have to notch it to fit this middle piece and then uh, uh, just a simple 45 up there. All right, so what I'm going to do to notch this piece to fit around the uh, down bar here is I'm actually going to go ahead, uh, figure this angle um, that, that that tube needs to notch into this tube. And there's also going to be kind of a rotational angle. Since this lays down to a little lower point than the top of the hoop that the uh, piece I'm making goes to, it's not going to be perfectly notched in parallel with this. So what I want to do is actually uh, rotate this piece in the notcher. And uh, just doing some preliminary math, it's... Um, looking like uh, between six and seven degrees. And so I'm going to rotate it in the notcher, pretending that the notcher is going straight up and down in this instance. And then looking at it from above, you know, obviously I'm going to um, make a notch going off in this direction. So I know that this is a 22 and a half degree angle um, past 90 here. And then this is a 45. So what I'll end up doing, kind of looking from the top here, is, is notching this at a, uh, uh, a 67 and a half degree angle uh, from straight across the tube as you would be, as it would be set up in the notcher. A good way to uh, make a notch like this, um, measuring across the uh, 45 degree notch in this piece, you know, I can see it's just a little over an inch and three quarters. Um, kind of, of, of width uh, where it settles on that rear hoop. Um, and I also know that I want the center of this part that sits on the hoop to line up with the inside of both the um, upper rear frame rail and the down bar area. this line here. Um, this this is a little bit outside of that because of how I want it to line up. Um, but measuring halfway across and then giving that little bit of extra room um, should give me a really good initial notch for the piece I'm making. Also, um, just recognize the difference between the outside of the notch or the outside of the hole saw and where that hole saw will intersect the tube. Um, so the notch will look a lot smaller um, kind of from from what's cut away but as it 
as it cuts to the center of that hole saw, it's going to grow uh, to the full width of the hole saw as you, as you travel kind of across that circle there. It's a little confusing, but it's, it's one way you can mess up a notch pretty easy. So just always consider that outside edge um, is paramount above any other intersection point. All right, so looking down the hole saw here, you can see I've, I've got it sitting at about 13 sixteenths of an inch from that outside edge. <clears throat> so that's a little less than the 7 eighths, which is halfway across. Um, remember that I wanted to give it that little extra bit of uh, clearance, just, just not only for me to have something to kind of polish, but also because um, that tube is actually moved over just a little bit um, from this this tube here just to kind of keep the center line in line at that node <clears throat> so the only thing left to do is to um, to set that angle I was mentioning earlier uh, tighten this thing up and, and make the notch and, and try out what I've got all right the notch looks pretty nice I uh, might still have to fine-tune kind of the width at which this sits but uh, it's looking good. I even gave it a little uh, clearance for a uh, weld fillet there. Um, I'm going to be welding this one in before that one. Um, just so when it's time I want that clearance. But looks uh looks pretty good. And uh, it's about time to get on to the uh, next pieces. Um, also, I'm going to, going to follow that same uh, kind of order of events. Uh, to make the double notch on that side too. It's pretty much exactly the same just in mirror um, You know since everything's going to be symmetrical with this X All right, and I went ahead and uh, taped that primary X diagonal in there just to have a look at it Looks pretty nice All right got the second part of the X in Just made it basically uh, like the uh, first part there um, but have this nice 90 degree inch and a quarter uh, notch to fit onto that. It's one piece to go. All right. I've got the uh, final upper right hand part of the X in there, and I'm just kind of working on uh, lining everything up just right. Um, I'm going to put everything in line and in place, and then just kind of look at the notches and see if any of them need to be kind of. Um, fine-tuned with the die grinder just to make everything um, kind of seat in perfectly right. but I measured it up and uh, we're, uh, we're fitting in right but the X looks super cool from the front kind of has this neat truss looking uh, construction here uh, pretty cool look should keep it nice and, and rigid a lot of the goal is just to take the stress um, off of a lot of uh, joints that that might be bending back and forth uh, just avoid cracks and all that kind of thing so it's uh looks really cool too well i hope you all enjoyed taking a look at uh, putting these down bars in um, the suspension and shock brackets will be coming as promised um, I'm going to go ahead and make another video on that when it's time to do that and might even get into uh, mounting the anti-roll bar in that video. So thanks for watching and hope to see you all next time. I would be honored if you'd like and subscribe. See you all again soon.